Welcome to chapter C6 of the Textbook on Sustainability Management. This chapter is about sustainability accounting. And with this, we are entering one of the areas that most people think of being a, a core of what management is about, accounting, so how to measure things. And you probably know the famous saying by management guru Peter Drucker, who once said that what you don't measure you don't manage. So this chapter will be about how to measure certain elements of sustainability performance of products, of companies, of organizations, and so on. So let's have a look what you will be able to learn after this chapter. First, we'll start with the broad topic of so-called life cycle sustainability assessment. That is one of two larger topics in sustainability accounting that we will have an example here in this chapter. So first you'll be able to explain the different elements of this life cycle sustainability assessment, LCSA, and uh, the areas of application. So how and why um, companies use as LSCA. You will learn that LSCA consists of three different subtypes of sustainability assessment. The first is ELCA or simply LCA often. That is the environmental life cycle assessment. The second part is the LCC, that is the life cycle costing. And then we will have uh, an in-depth look at SLCA. And you probably already guessed that is social life cycle assessment. And together they are used to inform various aspects of sustainability management from these three pillars, um, economic, ecological, and social aspects. Then you'll be able to describe the general approach and different steps of specifically an environmental life cycle um, analysis, because that is the most advanced part of um, LCSA. So we have a very defined system of how environmental life cycle analysis should be conducted. And that is it's carried out in four consecutive steps. First of defining goals and scope of the assessment, for example, assessing a product or a process, then compiling a life cycle inventory, conducting a life cycle impact assessment and finally performing life cycle interpretation. And based on that knowledge, then afterwards, you'll be able to explain differences in conducting an ELCA compared to then life cycle costing, so LCC and social life cycle assessment, because they differ a bit. And we will base that on what we know on um, environmental life cycle assessment. And then you'll learn that LCC does not include the step of life cycle impact assessment. And we will discuss why that is the case. And you'll learn that um, social life cycle assessment or analysis um, SLCA is less standardized than an ELCA and often cannot rely as extensively as ELCA on quantitative data and on scientifically proven facts so that there is more leeway for interpretation often. That is it about the entire uh, topic and, and, and uh, management element of LCSA. And then we have a second one, and that is the area of carbon accounting. Uh, carbon and carbon emissions, uh, along with the entire debate on climate change, has become a top um, important topic in management in sustainability management so we will have an uh, extensive sub chapter on that topic as well first you'll be able to differentiate so-called scopes different scopes of emissions so-called scope one scope two and scope two emissions and explain the relevance why we differentiate these three types of scopes of emission you'll learn that scope one emissions are direct emissions of a company, of an organization, while scope two and three cover different types of indirect emissions from the supply chain uh, and so on. You will learn why this differentiation is relevant. Uh, it's because to, it's relevant to identify levers for improving a company's carbon performance and also to avoid double counting of emissions. You will then be able to critically analyze different types of carbon emission reduction targets many companies around the globe nowadays set themselves emission reduction targets and there are some things expressed as relative targets or as absolute targets you will compare that have a look um, which one is better uh, hint already none of them is better it all depends on how they are used 
and you will learn about the so-called SBTI, that is the Science-Based Target Initiative. And this initiative provides guidance for organizations on developing these respective emission reduction targets. And finally, you'll be able to explain the potential, but also the limitations of carbon offsetting and criteria for high quality carbon offsetting schemes. Because companies and also individuals cannot um, exist without any carbon emissions, there inevitably are some carbon emissions. So for the rest emissions that you cannot reduce, or get rid of, you could then think of how to offset these emissions. Um, and uh, the, the, that, that, that element, this, this management element of carbon offsetting can actually be used to balance out um, types of rest emissions by investing in, in projects, environmental projects all around the globe. But they can be problematic and they are criticized um, quite heavily sometimes, especially if they do not meet certain quality criteria. And we will have a look at these quality criteria in the chapter as well. As always, the chapter comes with um, different features. We have a feature on sustainability in business that talks about BASF and the C balance analysis. BASF, the chemical uh, giant, the multinational chemical uh, company, has its own um, approach to life cycle sustainability assessment with different pillars. Again, combining this in them, these pillars in this C balance analysis. You'll have a look. Uh, in that. And then we have two features on sustainability in society. The first one is about glass, plastic, or aluminum. Show me the ideal bottle or can or whatever. Um, and that kind of gives us an idea of how you could use these kind of um, life cycle analysis, what you can deduce from them in how far they are important for companies or also for consumers. And then the second feature on sustainability in society is about assessing social, environmental and economic sustainability and why it is such a complex task to really perform a holistic LCSA that really covers the different parts of sustainability, not on the, the economic, but also the social and the cost part. And we will here in this feature use the example of biofuel production to illustrate this complexity.